G'day mate, my name is Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. If you're new to my channel, I do Aussie vs American videos as well as Bluey breakdown videos as well. So if either of those interest you, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. So today's video is going to be a huge breakdown of episode 11, Sheepdog. This was a really funny, funny episode and again we got to see some more characters outside of just the Gila family. So I really enjoyed that and I'm super excited to share all of the Easter eggs that I found with you. If you're new here as well, I've done other episode breakdowns, I'm doing one for every episode for season three going all the way into the middle of December so don't forget to go and check those out there'll be links to them down in the description below otherwise though let's get started with our first thing our synopsis dad agrees to play sheepdog with Bluey and Bingo to stop them from disturbing mum, who is taking a well-earned rest but looking after sheep is harder work than they expected I think just starting off Many people were kind of confused. They thought the idea of sheepdog was literally maybe to do with Mackenzie's family, but this is about a dog being a sheep. So just to give you that bit of reference first. So we open up in the kitchen. Bluey is very annoyingly playing the recorder, which I think is a really awesome reference to real life where the recorder is probably the most frustrating and annoying musical instrument that you could ever hear, especially when it's a child playing it, because unfortunately, None of us were any good at playing the recorder as a child. So you can start to see the frustration literally animated on Chili's face where she just, she needs a break. She just needs some time out for herself. We then finally get to see the hairstyle that we saw Bandit have in the trailer. Turns out it was a haircut, which I had guessed, but it wasn't what I thought it was. This is meant to show that he has a mullet because he thinks that they're back in style again. As we look sort of behind him too, we see that there's a nice little bone in the glass window there. A reference to them, of course, being dogs. So once Chili's sort of gone upstairs, she's taken her little bit of a break. Bandit's in charge of all the kids. So he's trying to keep them occupied by explaining to them, for one, what a mullet actually is, because he thinks it's something that cool people get. And this is, of course, where we get a nice cameo from Lucky's dad, Pat, literally just laughing at him, saying, nice mullet, and just like walking away laughing. We then see Bandit try to distract the girls by doing the can-can dance, which, of course, is a great reference to the can-can dance in real life with the music as well. And then in the background, we also see our first long dog for this episode, which is just underneath the table there. In the next scene, we then see our second long dog, which magically has appeared at the top of the shelves at the back. So we've got a little brown long dog up there. And then I also want to point out uh, Bluey's spots. There's been a bit of, a, I guess, like a debate about them. A lot of people see it as a reference, of course, to Disney and Mickey Mouse. Although Bluey is shown on Disney worldwide outside of Australia, it is an Australian production, though. It is not a Disney production. We then get to see Bandit being a crazy sheep on the trampoline. And just down the bottom there is a the football. Again, an awesome reference to the Australian footy, which is a really popular sport for us. We then get our first voice actor cameo that we haven't seen before. So we have a electrician salesman, which is pretty funny, come to the door. Uh, he's voiced by Darren Harlan. He's voiced by Darren Hanlon, who is a famous Australian singer and songwriter. And interestingly enough, he might have gotten this cameo thanks to Twitter and the Gotta Be Done podcast, referencing him and giving him a shout out on Twitter, as well as the Bluey Studio saying like, hey, you should get this guy in. He's a local from Gympie. And maybe they did. And this got to be his voice acting opportunity. In the next scene, then we get to see a couple more Easter eggs that we have seen already in sort of previous episodes. So we've got the two tennis balls, one down by the door, one underneath the table. We then have the budgie from copycat episode. And then we've got some new stuffed toys down on the ground there. So we've got a penguin, which could be a reference to the penguins in Madagascar. We then have a cat, which could be a reference to Cake the Cat from Adventure Time. And then we also have a double-decker bus, which could be just a reference to the UK double-decker buses. As Bluey manages to escape and tries to go and talk to her mum, we get a few more little Easter eggs in the background here. The first one being Baby Bluey in her little red cloth diaper, which we saw from Baby Race. We then have the tennis ball again next to the pot plant. And then on the ground, Got a lot of references to sheep in this episode, kind of similar to how we had lots of references about magic in the magic show. So this sheep here could also be maybe a shout out to Sean the sheep as well. Now we then get to see everyone going over into Wendy's yard to play sheepdog. And if you thought something sounded a bit different about Wendy, you would be correct. She has a new voice actor. So the original voice actor was actually one of the animators on the show and their name was Beth Durek. But now we have a new voice actor for Wendy, 
an Australian comedian called Emily Tahini. And this isn't her normal sounding voice. She's obviously put on a bit more of like a posh accent for this as well. So that's why maybe it sounds just a little bit different. But we of course see clothes on her heels hoist there. Again, this is sort of like a debate as to why there are clothes in the Bluey universe when they don't really wear clothes. But we have seen them wear them sort of on special occasions or for certain occupations. So maybe this has something to do with Wendy's occupation. We get another reference to Bandit being treated as a dog. It's happened in some previous episodes so far for this season where they've told him to like stay. This time Wendy is telling him to drop it, drop it, drop it. So it's kind of funny again that they're using those sort of dog commands within the Bluey universe. So something that I mentioned before of course was the Hills Hoist or the clothesline in the background there. For anyone who's not from Australia, this is a very typical thing that you'll see in backyards in Australia. It is an Australian icon, it is made in Australia, it was invented in Australia. It used to only be made in Australia but now it's also made in China. But it is also very popular in New Zealand as well. But basically it's what we use instead of dryers. We then get another hilarious reference to bottoms. In previous episodes so far for this season 3 we've gotten references of taking photos of bottoms, touching bottoms. Seasons before that we've gotten the bum bongos and Bandit wiping his bum on the window. And yet again we get another bum joke of Bandit whamming Windy in the bum. And I've got to give kudos to Wendy for like playing along with this because it was hilarious. We also get sort of a big change in how we see Wendy because before it's just been like little offhanded comments and you know oohs and ahs but we actually get to hear more from Wendy this time around. We already knew that she was a pretty decent friend to Chili when Bluey was born. She made her five or six lasagnas and again we get to see her how empathetic she is that while she might act all kind of snobby or hoity-toity, she actually is a really empathetic friend and neighbor. She understands what's happening, that Chili just needs a bit of time out and so she's gonna help her out and help sort out what's going on with the sheepdog game and keeping the girls distracted. We then also get another cool Easter egg. So in episodes where we usually go to someone else's house, sometimes we see different colored tennis balls. And in this one, we've got the yellow tennis ball on like the racquetball game that's in the background there. So another sort of Easter egg shout out. We then get to see another long dog as Chili's walking through the kitchen. So on the fridge, I've mentioned this before, we've got the long dog magnet as well as the other magnets that spell out blue. But then we also get my favorite long dog for this episode, the sheep long dog that's just hidden down on the corner there behind the pot plants. Overall, I think the creators have really taken it upon themselves to show that Bandit and Chili aren't too perfect to aspire to that they are both parents, they're both relatable, they both Things need get time too much out. For them. When... And I think that was a really big complaint that was happening in season one and two is that they seemed too perfect. And this season I think has really shown them in a different light and being a lot more relatable to just regular people and regular parents. I do really enjoy that they included Wendy being a lot more empathetic and giving her more of a speaking role. And I also think that they've shown Chili to be maybe a little bit more introverted. She likes to be alone a lot more. We've seen that in the beach and the weekend, but that could also just be her being a mum and just wanting some time to herself every now and again. Overall though, I think this is a 10 out of 10 episode. It's absolutely hilarious. It's got all the different Easter eggs in it and we get to see different characters as well. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Leave a big thumbs up down below. Write a comment if you've noticed any other Easter eggs that maybe I missed at all as well. And don't forget to subscribe for more content. And I'll see you all in another video. Bye.